You know, this whole idea of informatics, I, I think, is an important one, uh, don't you think, Alex? Oh, absolutely, Deepak. And uh, I really uh, uh, take my hat off to Greg and your group for really paving the way for how we should look at informatics, both being embedded within the EHR, uh, but also the use of electronic alerts, both uh, at, uh, at admission, but also there's some recent work at discharge as well. So in our system, actually, we're doing exactly that, Greg. What we've done is we've, uh, uh, we've implemented and embedded the improved tool, not just for VTE risk, for, but for bleed risk. So the tool automatically is automated. It has uh, a logic uh, process built in. Uh, the score is automated with some small exceptions. And then the hope is ultimately that, and, and we're in the process of building this uh, throughout the entire Northwell system, is that it spits out a, a, a score for VTE risk, spits out a score for bleed risk, um, automatically calculates VTE and bleed risk in terms of net clinical benefit, and then is tied to an order entry set that states, okay, your patient is at so-and-so risk. These are our recommended prophylactic strategies. It could be an anticoagulant strategy, or if they're high bleed risk, it could be a mechanical strategy. But the most important thing in my view, and I think Greg had, had hinted to that, is that now this is also being done at discharge. So all of a sudden we have the same process being done after three or four days, which is the crucial point to, to my point of view, and the same process is, is alerting to the physician that your patient is still at risk, are you willing to consider extended prophylaxis? And I really think this is where the direct oral anticoagulants have a huge advantage. Because now patients, in my view, from a patient-centered approach, have real options. Yeah. Whereas before we just had injectables, now we say take a pill every day, once a day for 30 days. Uh, and, and again, I just want to emphasize the incidence that we're talking about is a 30-day incidence. And I think, Mike, I've seen um, a previous seminar that you've you know, that you've uh, talked about this, where, where we multiply this over, let's say, a 12-month period of time, all of a sudden, these incidences start looking like high-risk cardiovascular patients. Right. So, yeah. again, this is only point. a 30-day incidence. No, oh, that's a really key point. It does add up and, very quickly. And we did see continued divergence of the curves from 30 days on out beyond that, to say 90 days. I think we, again, underestimate what I call the legacy effect where if you reduce the amount of clot there, well, that's the gift that keeps giving after you stop the drug as well. So again, the cardiologist side of me says, why aren't we treating these people longer? I mean, we've done some trials that, you know, 30, 35, 42 days, but I'm thinking we really need to consider 60, maybe 90 days uh, once we get the buy-in that this is a good thing. You, know, you may actually be stopping the process of developing thrombosis uh, at an early. early stage, and that feeds in. I mean, there's now some thought in the surgical uh, VTE space that a lot of these patients are actually forming clots during their operation in the OR, and in the there's I've heard some uh, very compelling uh, hypotheses that medical patients actually are forming their clots before they come to the hospital. We're treating patients after they leave and during the hospital, but they may actually be forming these due to their medical illness at home before they're admitted. So uh, I think we have to kind of rethink uh, where, where the pathophysiology of thrombosis is really um, spending most of its time because it may be starting where we're not recognizing. You know, it's amazing that the, such a fundamental thing we don't really know that it, you know, we're still learning, it seems like, the basics. Illness is probably a systemic disease, right. you know, and we're not treating it as a systemic disease. Yeah, Mostly markers, inflammation, yeah, right? Elevated yeah. markers of inflammation, elevated markers of thrombosis. Mm -hmm. You're right, those mm -hmm. are systemic. And if you look at the accrual of events in the Mariner trial, because we actually then collected events even after 45 days, another 30 days after that, so up to 75 days, uh, the VT events continue to accrue in the placebo arm for 60 days after patients were discharged in the hospital. And around day 60 or so, they're starting, uh, what, the, there was starting to be a plateau effect of, of the number of accrued VT events. So, so really, I think those are very good points that as patients seem to be at risk for much, much longer than even 30 days. And maybe in the future, we may consider, especially Gary, to your point, if, if our options are safe, to even extend this beyond 30 days. But at the very least, these patients should be getting some type of post-discharge prophylaxis. And again, 
in, in a subset of these patients, they should be getting extended post-discharge prophylaxis. Yeah, and I'd like to also device. say that machine learning can be helpful in saying, well, you know, you made it through 35 to 42 days. You didn't bleed, so you've passed your bleeding stress test. You're at a different risk moving forward. Um, and so we need to iteratively assess risk, not just at baseline, but at different times, and then we can make decisions. Do we stop or do we continue? So I think we've got to do a better job in terms of informatics. Yeah, that's and that's a clever approach. Yeah. And, and when we do that, uh, but to Mike's point earlier, we should take, uh, you know, I think we should move away from where we've been in venous disease for a long time, which was focusing on venous thrombolems, and we should take a more holistic patient look because that's even further rationale for extending because it may be that we talked about the risk factors being the same. We're just getting patients with markers of a thrombotic tendency, and it's no comfort to the patient to say we prevented your PE, but you had a stroke. And so if we can, if we can reduce all of those thrombotic events, and anticoagulants do have impact on that. So uh, I think there's a lot more work to do here, but I, I would see the tendency towards longer rather than shorter. Oh, I, I, uh, I think you, and patient selection will be key, but how we do that 